Welcome to MRS Bulletin's Materials News Podcast, providing breakthrough news and interviews with researchers on the hot topics in materials research. My name is Sophia Chen. We tie fibers into knots all the time in everyday life. We use them to keep our shoes on our feet or to secure ropes on boats. But Weedy Mustopo tried creating knots and materials on an entirely different and absolutely tiny scale. If you look from one end to the other end of the knots, they're about 70 micron. So that's around the size of the diameter of uh, our hair. They're pretty tiny, uh, really hard to see it just under a normal optical microscope. We actually had to test them and kind of investigate what they look like using a scanning electron microscope. Now a postdoc at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, Mustopo did this work while he was a mechanical engineering PhD student at Caltech in Julia Greer's research group. Mustopo wanted to see if a material made out of these knots would be more structurally robust. So he created a foam out of these knots. Foams are composite materials made of two or more materials. Here, one is essentially plastic and the other one is air. If you think about the foams that you know, like mattress filling or even styrofoam, you can squish and compress them easily, but you can't pull them very hard without ripping the material. By incorporating knots into the foam, Mustopo and his team were able to create a foam that can stretch. So now we can think of foams not just as a punching bag, but also as like a super stretchy, tough material. They used a 3D printing technique known as two-photon lithography to create the knots and subsequently build the foam out of the knots. In two-photon lithography, you start with a block of resin. You focus a laser at points in the resin to trigger a chemical reaction at those points, which converts those points into a different material, a polymer. Then, after scanning the resin with the laser to create the 3D object you want, you use a solvent to wash away the remaining unconverted resin. Then, in Mustopo's case, you're left with your foam. In this way, they sculpted the knots out of the resin rather than tying the knots as you would in a shoelace. Two-photon lithography offers some design advantages, says Mustopo. Usually, if you 3D print a structure, you kind of go like layer by layer. And then if you have like a huge overhanging structure, it would just... Uh, drop down and it'll just like fail. What's unique with two photon is that we are printing the structure inside the resin itself. To visualize Mustopo's knots, imagine zooming in on a piece of foam and seeing a 3D lattice formed from unit cells, each consisting of three rhombuses. Each side of the rhombus consists of three strands of fiber. These fibers are woven around each other to form knots you have to intersect each strand to itself to make a knot. They compared the stretchability of the material to similar structures where the rhombuses were made of woven fibers that did not intersect each other to form knots. The knotted rhombus structure has 107% longer elongation than what the woven structure of the same size could have. Compared to its woven counterpart, the knotted material could also absorb 92% more energy, a measure of how much you could pull it without it ripping. This work illustrates an approach to designing structures known as hierarchical ordering. It involves considering an object at different structural levels. Here, they are creating a foam that's more stretchable by engineering its microscopic structure. You'll find examples of hierarchical ordering in nature. If you take like a human femur bone or a humor thigh bone, when you look under the microscope, you see that bone is actually made out of little tiny struts uh, of biological materials. They're looking into applications for this research. One potential application could be for a biomedical implant placed in the body to filter chemotherapy drugs. This work was published in a recent issue of Science Advances. My name is Sophia Chen from the Materials Research Society. For more news, log on to the MRS Bulletin website at mrsbulletin.org and follow us on Twitter, at MRS Bulletin. Don't miss the next episode of MRS Bulletin Materials News. Subscribe now. Thank you for listening.